All right, everyone, welcome to Signal Processing with Paul. In this video, what I wanna do is talk about why the Fourier series is so important. I really wanna motivate building this up. We're gonna talk about the equations, but what's more important than being able to solve the Fourier series when somebody asks you to do it is understanding why it's so important and why you should care about it. So we're gonna talk about, well, why should you care about the Fourier series? What's so important about it? So let me start with an analogy. When you have an image stored on your computer, it's represented generally in terms of R, G, and B values. And these are values for the red, the green, and the blue component of each pixel. And this makes sense because when the pixel is off, it's completely dark, and then you can mix different values of red, green, and blue at each point in the image, and what you get is different colors. You can basically build up all of your colors by representing each pixel value as a combination of a red, a green, and a blue component. Now, this is really interesting because if you want to display white, what you have to do is just basically have red, green, and blue completely on. And if you want to display black, you just turn them all off. Then this makes sense. Now, this is great for a screen. And, you know, we can make red and green and now blue LEDs very, very easily and pretty cheaply and for low power. But what happens when we want to print this on a sheet of white paper? Well, this means that every single point on the piece of paper, we would need to start with a black piece of paper. And then we would basically need to, like put R, G, and B at every point at maximum ink, you know, to, to create white. They would even need a lot of red ink, a lot of blue ink, and a lot of green ink to, to mix together to, to create white ink. And we would need to have the whole page be like that. And then whenever we want black, we would just simply not use those colors. Well, what's a better solution is to, rather than doing this, is have a white sheet of paper and we convert each our image basically into CMY, which is cyan, magenta, and yellow. And what this means is as we mix cyan, magenta, and yellow together, we get black. So on a majority white page, rather than painting the white and just not painting where the black is, we just paint where the black is and leave the white part alone. Now, the point of this analogy here is to say that how you represent your signal can make certain things easier to do than others. And sometimes it's helpful to change from one representation to another. So we're all very used to representing signals and things in the time domain. I have a function, f of t, and it has, you know, some value at each point. And what I'm basically doing, how this is represented is, if you give me a time function, I will tell you the value of this function at that very specific point. So basically, you're building up your function by basically specifying its value at all of these different points. Now, this is great for being able to plot it, you know, or, or being able to understand what it's doing, at, you know, in the time domain, but this can make it very difficult when we want to deal with things like circuits. Just because we have a function of time doesn't mean it's always easy to do this. Now, here's what I mean. As we've seen in talking about circuit elements, we know that capacitors and inductors and resistors, but resistors are kind of easy, but capacitors and inductors are governed by these linear differential equations. And... These are the relationships we've been talking about. Now, while it's easy to solve for a simple circuit with a single inductor, a single capacitor, if you start getting into these more complicated circuits like the one I have below, it very quickly becomes very difficult to solve this massive differential equation. The point is, is you don't want to be having to spend the time doing this. It, it's really annoying to do. So what if there's a way we can represent it, similarly to how we did here with the red, green, and blue moving to CMY, where it's really, really easy to basically solve these differential equations, we can turn these differential equations into basically algebraic equations and then solve our circuit really easily. And then once we've done that, we can just turn it right back into, into the time domain once we have solved for what we want to have, whether it's voltage or current. And, and I also want to say this is not just unique to circuits. You may not care about circuits, but you can do the same thing with mechanical networks of springs and all these other things. There are a lot of areas in which this theory or this way of looking at things, of looking at this problem from a different angle or representing the problem in a way where it's easier to solve what you're trying to solve or build something. Um, this is what we do in engineering all the time. And the way we're going to do this is rather than writing our signal as a function of time, we're going to try to write our signal as a function of something that is easy to take the derivative of. It's not necessarily always easy to take the derivative of something that's a function of time. But if we have something that's a function of an exponential or a sum of exponentials, because integrals and derivatives are linear, we can now very easily take integrals and derivatives of them. So if you look at the exponential, like e to the, oops, e to the theta x, when I hit this with the derivative, what do I get? I get theta e to the theta x. And actually, I can hit this with multiple derivatives. In fact, I can even 
hit this with a with an nth order derivative. Let's just do it that way. D, dn, and what do you get? All you get is just an n in front of the theta. You just do it multiple times. Hey, well, that's pretty easy. That's a lot easier than having to write some function of time and do the chain rule and do all this other stuff. You just basically have some, you just basically put an n there. And similarly, an integral of e to the theta x dx, what do I get? I get one over theta e to the theta x. And of course, if I wanna stack these integrals n times, what happens? Boom, we just put an n there, it's easy. Now we just have an algebraic expression and we've written our signal in a way that's easy to put this together. So this is what the Fourier series allows us to do. Now we're gonna start by building up the Fourier series, building it up in intuition for that. And then from there, it'll just be a quick jump to go from there to the Fourier transform. And then once you understand this intuition, all of the other transforms that we talk about in signal processing, like the Laplace transform, Z transform, DTFT, DFT, these are all just slight modifications on the same general principle. So if you understand this principle, then the rest of these are gonna be a piece of cake for you, I'm serious. Um, then you just have to do, you know, you just have to do the math. But once you understand it, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. There's a reason we like doing it this way rather than having to write out this massive differential equation with all these dependencies and stuff. It's something you don't want to do. This is a much, much better way to do this. So what we're going to do is rather than having a function of time where we're plotting as a function of time, we want to have something that's a function almost of something that would be e to the e to the theta, I guess. <laughs> if we can write our, our basically our function as a sum of these exponentials, what we've basically done now is we can now go ahead and start taking derivatives, derivatives and integrals. We do whatever transform transformation we need to do, like solving the expression. Now we get, let's say, y of e to the theta, something that's a function of the exponential. And then once again, we go back and we have y of T. So we basically avoided having to do this, which is really annoying, and kind of found a workaround, found, a, found an easy way to do it. It's like if you wanted to go from point A to point B and there's a wall in your way, yeah, you could try to drill through the wall or climb over the wall or something, but that may suck. Why don't you just walk around it? Why don't you just find a place where it's much easier to walk past the point you need to go and then just come back to where you started? So that's what we're doing with the Fourier series, Fourier transform, these sorts of things. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and start talking about how we get this exponential. How do we write, how do we do this part, right? How do we write our function in terms of the exponential so we can do these linear differential equations and turn them into algebraic equations? So that's what we'll do.